thought I'd do another video on possibilities with this Doctor Who voice changer kit. That's the one I spoke about in the previous video. Then I used it as a voice inverter. The main stages on board include an audio preamp, a balance modulator, and a local oscillator. The sideband inverter had an audio signal coming in, it being mixed with a signal around 3 kilohertz generated by this 555 local oscillator, and the output being an inverted version of the input. In other words, 2.5 kilohertz coming in, being mixed with 3 kilohertz, gives 500 hertz, and conversely, 500 hertz coming in mixed with 3 gives a difference of 2.5 kilohertz. That was useful for different applications, for instance if you're trying to receive lower sideband on an upper sideband receiver, or improving reception of double sideband on a direct conversion receiver. However, there are other applications as well, especially if you shift the 3 kilohertz local oscillator signal. In my previous video, I'd already changed the supplied 10 nanofarad capacitor to 470 picofarad, and that gave me a much higher frequency range, including the 3 kilohertz that I needed. I didn't change the resistor in series with the potentiometer. That resistor was 100k, and that set the maximum limit of this oscillator. What I've done now is I've put in a potentiometer instead of a trim pot so I can more easily vary it and dropped the 100k resistor to 22k. That allows me to adjust the oscillator to put out a signal at a higher frequency, well above 3kHz. In fact I can go to 20kHz or higher. Now the benefit of that is that you can convert a wide range of signals coming in down to audio frequencies. For instance, if you had an incoming audio signal at 11 kilohertz and this was set to 10 kilohertz, then your difference would be 1 kilohertz. An example I can think of is, let's say you had something like a Pixie transceiver, that's those cheap direct conversion transceiver kits, and they normally come with a crystal on 7023. Now, supposing you wanted to tune frequencies well around that, then, since the receiver is already fairly broad, and there's not much audio filtering in it, its output is probably fairly rich in signals around 10 kilohertz or so, around the crystal frequency. So, you can feed the output, even if it is 7 or 8 kilohertz, into this stage which operates as a mixer and converter and by adjusting the potentiometer you'll be able to adjust the frequency down to around 1 kilohertz thus enabling easy CW reception. So you could effectively obtain frequency agility at least coverage of maybe 10 or 20 kilohertz even if you've just got the crystal operating on one frequency at the RF side. So you're effectively varying the audio pass band and converting it down to around 1 kilohertz. And with that arrangement, you should be able to hear not just one signal, but several either side, just with the one crystal in your direct conversion receiver. Now this is into the realm of stuff that I haven't actually done yet, but it should be possible with this type of unit. Let's say that your location at home was very noisy in terms of RF but you had a park or an open area at the end of your street and you built a small receiver, possibly solar powered. That receiver might be very simple, just direct conversion and you put the audio from it in say an FM wireless microphone. Then at home you could tune that in on an FM tuner which, since it's a piece of hi-fi equipment, you'll be able to hear audio over quite a wide range, up to, say, 15 kilohertz.
If you connected this audio frequency shifter to that, then you should be able to pick off several CW signals in, say, a 10 kilohertz or more bandwidth wide. Now, of course, there are issues with your direct conversion receiver up in the tree, for instance, the audio image. But if you did something like have a remote control thing where you could shift the local oscillator on the receiver up in the tree so that any interference you got could be dodged, then you could possibly ameliorate that problem. Again, I stress I haven't done this. Having said that, I did connect this unit to my Beach 40 double sideband transceiver. That's direct conversion and has a fairly wide audio bandwidth. I was able to tune the Beach 40 a fair distance from a desired signal. And with the audio at several kilohertz, say 5 or 10 kilohertz coming out of it, I was able to put it into this frequency shifter and I was able to resolve the signal. I could hear several signals in that way, both CW and SSB. Something I really recommend is looking at the website of Ono PA2OHH. Ono has a lot of circuits, but of most interest is a QRSS receiver for 80 meters. The receiver uses the phasing method to suppress the opposite sideband and provide selectivity without frequency conversions or use of a crystal filter. A particular twist with this one is that the audio output is around 9600 Hz. The benefit of doing that is that you could hear QRSS signals while using a local oscillator using the color burst crystal on 3.579. Another benefit as well is it's easier to get a 90 degree phase shift over a proportionately small range on a higher frequency than it is on a larger range at a lower frequency. That's the reason why audio phase shift networks where you're having to achieve a constant 90 degree phase shift over a wide range, say 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz, are so much more complicated than this arrangement where just one resistor and one capacitor can provide a suitable phase shift. Ono was able to modify the software to handle that 9 kilohertz signal bearing in mind his application was QRSS. Again, I haven't tried it, but if you wanted to use this arrangement for CW or SSB, then you could use the audio shifter that I was just talking about to convert the 9600 kilohertz signal down to the normal audio frequencies that we're used to for CW and SSB. As for the circuit itself, I recommend you go to Ono's website but it's basically all discrete components, except for a 74HC4066 used in the mixes. Of course, we're very familiar with that part because we also use that in the kit from JCAR for the voice inverter, and now frequency shifter. Ono has a similar QRSS receiver for 40 meters, but to suit the crystal available, that output frequency is around 17 kilohertz. This is my version of the PA2OHH receiver. It's a little bit different because I'm converting it down to audio rather than the 9 to 17 kilohertz. It does work, but of course it has issues with achieving a constant audio phase shift. I might do a separate video on this receiver later. So there's a few ideas for you. An audio voice shifter, inverter, or even Doctor Who voice, like implemented with this easy to build kit, has many applications in audio and radio. Hope you found this video interesting, and if you do decide to build a circuit like it, let me know how you go in the comments below.